Hey guys, now let's look um, at another exercise that causes a few problems in chapter one. This exercise, oh, it is seven. I think I put eight somewhere else, but I do have seven here. So I want you um, to look with me at this exercise. Harold is standing in front of a flower bed that contains six flowers. Um, create an algorithm that directs Harold to pick up the flowers as he walks to the other side of the flower bed. Pick up all the red flowers with his right hand, anything else with his left hand. Using only the instructions shown, um, create the algorithm. Now, I have once again created the text boxes. Remember, you go to Insert, if you're in Word, Text Box. It'll give you a box like this. I choose that simple text box. And I have typed in all the instructions as they are in the book. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight instructions are in the book. Um, and you have to kind of look at the book with the picture. So you see Harold, and then you're going to see one, two, three, four, five, six flowers. Now, um, you have to kind of look at the picture as you do this. But as we work through this problem, I want you to see um, just how you don't have to get it right the first time. So, one thing we know is we have to determine what the flower is so we know what to do with it, right? So let's just start with that for a minute. So we know if the flower is red, I'm going to bring that over here, um, we have to pick it with our right hand. Isn't that correct? So I'm going to indent a little bit. And, and that leads us to an else, right? Otherwise, else, we've got to pick the flower with the left hand, don't we? So that's correct. According to our instructions, he should pick all the red flowers with his right hand. Otherwise, he's going to use his left hand, right? Now, um, we had some, we, oh, one, let me go ahead and say also, when you see end if, that ends the if statement structure. So if you have if, you have to have an end if. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over here, right? So this is my if else end if structure right here. If it's red, pick it with your right hand. Otherwise, pick the flower with your left hand and if. Otherwise, an else, that's the same thing. I want you to get used to using else because that's the correct term in your programming language, okay? Then we have some other things going on, right? We have walk forward a complete step, repeat some number of times, and in repeat, right? Well, one thing is we, we know that we have to do it x times, and x times means we have to have an, when you have a repeat, you have to have somewhere an end repeat. And the reason I know these, this decision of if, if the flower is red goes within the repeat, it's because I'm going to ask this question every time I get to a flower. Is the flower red? Yes, do this. If not, do no. So I know because I have to repeat that question for every flower that this is within the repeat. Now, why does it not just say repeat x times and the x have a number? Well, if you go back, um, it says it will work for any combination of colored flowers, okay? And that means while this picture contains six, we need to allow for, what if it's more than six, right? Left over here is this walk forward one complete step. And let me show you where that comes in. First, if you look at the picture, you know that Harold is standing not at the red flower, but before it. So he's going to have to walk forward a step right? Then determine if the flower is red and what to do with it, right? And he's going to have to t keep t taking steps and taking steps until he ends. So one way to look at this is to say he's going to do this X number of times, walk forward a complete step, check the flower right, 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 right. However, Notice in the picture, he has to end up beyond, right here, beyond the flowers. 
So, that cannot be within the repeat. That's going to have to be after. So, I'm going to copy this and um, I'm going to add, I need another text box that says the same thing like this, right? So, he is going to walk forward a complete step, pick the flower, if red or yellow or whatever color, and he's going to keep that going until he has picked all the flowers. So, if this were me writing it, I would not have X times. I would say repeat until all the flowers are gone. That's what I would do different, but this is not the directions given to us, right? Repeat until walk one forward one step. That puts us at the first flower. Determine how to pick it and then go back. Walk one step forward, we're now at the yellow flower. We determine how to pick it. We go back. Now we're at the purple flower because we've walked forward one complete step. Determine how to pick it. Go back, walk forward, red, pick it. Walk forward, and we have another red one. We determine how to pick it. We go back, we walk forward one step. We're at the yellow flower. <coughs> We determine how to pick it, right? And now we're done with this, and we're just going to walk forward one complete step. Now, suppose you put, you didn't have another walk forward one complete step. You just have the one within this repeat. What would happen is you would come forward and you would keep asking, not only after you walk forward one complete step, you would keep asking how to pick flowers. But there's no flowers there. So we don't need to ask about the flowers if there's not one there. We need a stopping point. Now this is not the best example for a problem in the book, um, but it does kind of get you thinking about logic. That's why I use it. So I want you to consider these type things, okay? So actually you're going to end up with a little more um, steps when you go to um, excuse me, I just had a blank moment there. Um, you're going to end up with more steps. So we started with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps, right? I have already told you on the assignment screen that you're going to need um, nine, right? I told you that in this directions and there's and that's because when you end up with nine because you've had to add in that extra stop. I mean walk forward one step. All right, so I've launched the little exam here. And it says looking in your textbook, put the items in the correct order. So we got to refer back to our screen right here. Let me pull it back up. This here. So this is one and then this is two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine. One is repeat, nine is walk forward one step. All right, let's pop back to the quiz. All right, let's let's kind of go down here. So the first thing we know is we're going to have repeat. Um, I have six here instead of x. So well, this is the first statement, right? We repeat, and what do we know at the end? We know we, that's the last step. So we got the first and last step. So we're going to repeat six times, right? And then number two is walk forward a step. And then number three is the if. If it's red, then we want to pick with the right hand, right? Else, we need to pick uh, with the left hand. Oh, right here. And then we're going to end the if, and then we're going to end the repeat, and then walk forward one step. So now I have followed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine steps here. These are nine. I have numbered them, and I have come into the exam and put them in the correct order. So then I can um, save and submit. And then I'm going to click on OK to see how I did. 
school and missed a step. So let's see. I have no answer here, right? So we have repeat, walk forward. Okay. Okay. Oh, here's what I want to point out to you that there are two walk forwards and they were numbered one and two within the algorithm. Notice that I put the first one in the wrong spot. I should have put the um, this review here. So what do you do if you've said, oh, what a stupid mistake. I need to go back and fix it. Well, you go right back and launch it again because you have multiple attempts. Look right here, multiple attempts. So let's begin it again right quick. Um, and notice that um, I need to pay attention to the one and the two. So this one is now my last one, right? Now let's go repeat six times. Then we walk forward. Uh, this one down here at the bottom, one complete step. And then we're going to ask if, where's my if? Here we go. This is three. Four. Else is five. And then six. Then we need to end the repeat, end the if, and then end the repeat. Now they should be correct. Again, you have to pay attention to the one and two out here. Save and submit. All right, and now we can look at our score, and we did much better. So I hope this will help you walk through this one. I am not going to give you an example of the other ones, though. Um, you've got to do the same thing. Work it out. Once you think you have the solution, then number the steps.